This is Michael Woodward, and this is episode 48 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast, a podcast focused on telling the stories of dreamers, makers, innovators, and influencers. Along the way, we'll give you some tips and ideas of how you can make your big idea and dream a reality. On today's episode, we have Steve Cesari, really cool guy, more about Steve in a moment. But first, on Thursday's episode, episode 49, we have Jelaine D. She is the founder and creative director of Cherry Blooms, an incredible company creating great products around the world of cosmetics and fashion. Really great guest. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you check that out this Thursday. I want to remind you of something cool we're trying out. It's called One Tip Fridays, where every Friday we give you a tip or an idea of how you can chase your big idea and dream and make it a reality. We've been doing this for a couple weeks now, and I hope you've really enjoyed it. So check that out on Facebook and on Instagram. And if you've missed them, go back and check out some of our past One Tip Fridays. I think there's going to be some great ideas for you that you can take away and learn. Now let's jump into my interview with Steve Cesari. I am super excited about today's guest. His name is Steve Cesari. He's a consultant, author, speaker, and coach, and does a lot of other really cool stuff. He's written a book called Clarity, How to Get It how to keep it, how to use it to balance your life. Really cool book. He's been in business for over 40 years and he started or owned 15 companies. Some of the companies he's worked with are companies like GoPro, Juiceman, Sonicare, George Foreman Grills, OxyClean, Rug Doctor, Chick-fil-A, Atlanta Falcons and the Atlanta Hawks, Auto Trader, Toronto Blue Jays, Seattle Mariners and the Seattle Seahawks. Really cool guy. I think you're going to enjoy this episode. So let's jump into the conversation with Steve Cesari. Steve, I'm super excited to have you on today. Uh, you are a powerhouse in the world of, of business. And so before we dive into your new journey, before we dive into what you're doing today, tell us a little bit about your backstory, who you are and kind of how you got your start and what you've done for the last uh, you know, 20, 30 years. Sure, sure. Well, first of all, thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and 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 share some of my experiences with your with your listening audience, uh, and I'm honored to be here. So, um, yeah, I grew up in a little town in Bahala, uh, New York. I was one of eight kids. My dad uh, was in the restaurant business, had a heart attack when he was 39. They told him he had to get out wow. of the restaurant business. He opened up a little uh, store called Cesare's Market. Uh, and it sold groceries and had a meat counter in the back. And, and at 46, my dad had a heart attack and, and, and died. Uh, so that was just a, dev- a devastating event. But I, I knew from the very first day that I wanted to be in business for myself. Uh, I think it was kind of the entrepreneurial spirit that my dad had. Uh, and it really motivated me. And, and, and again, I went to the high school and college. Uh, I wasn't uh, the sharpest tool in the shed, so to speak. <laughs> I played football, went to college on a football scholarship, really enjoyed doing what I was doing. And when I came out, started working for a small company called Champs Sports Shop. And, and Champs was the first mall sporting good yeah. concept. And, and literally their, their, their growth model was uh, they had two primary uh, principles – uh, Rick and Pat, and they would bring in a family member or a good friend as an owner operator. And literally they ran out of family and friends. And I was the first, you know, non-family friend member to come in and, and be a part of that organization. And I ended up, uh, owning the store, uh, at Lenox square, which was the number one store out of 50 stores in the chain. Wow. And then, uh, they sold that business. I went on to work with another concept called sports town, which was the predecessor to sports authority. Uh, and, uh, you know, learned a, a lot about retail, had about 110 people working in a 50,000 square foot business. And, you know, through my champs experience and my sports town experience, I, I probably learned more about what not to do in business 
than what to do. And 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 again, I I think uh, you know again that they say life's a series of non-fatal mistakes. <laughs> it doesn't if it doesn't kill you, it's not a mistake at all. It's part of the process of gaining wisdom. Right. And a mistake is only a mistake if you don't learn from it. So I learned a lot from those experiences, and I knew that when I owned my own company, I was going to do things differently than than what I had learned in those first two experiences. And uh, got a call from my brother Rick uh, in late 1980, about June of 1989. He says, uh, I, I, I want to start a, a new business, uh, have the opportunity to market a product called the Juice Man Juicer uh, and need $50,000 uh, to start the company. And I, I called him and I said, uh, well, look, I'd love to participate if I bring uh, send you the check. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I come along with the package. Yeah. And it was kind of ironic because for three months after we started that business and it started growing real fast, uh, uh, I, I was working full time at Sports Town and, and I kept praying, you, you know, God, what do you want me to do here? And literally uh, one day the vice president of operations came in and said, Steve, we don't need you anymore because I was spending so much time building that other business. Wow. Uh, you know, he kind of came in and said, we don't need you anymore. And I went running home and I said, Indy, that's my wife's name. I, I just, uh, God just answered our prayer <laughs> and literally left on a plane the next day to go start Trillium Health Products wow. uh, with other Rick and, and which is a company that we grew from zero to, you know, a hundred million dollar run rate in about three and a half years. It's crazy. And, and you've really been able to do something that a lot of business people don't. You've been able to work with your brother through the years. Yeah, and, and it, it, it really is exciting. You know, we have two uniquely different skill sets. He's very creative. I'm more operational and strategy. Uh, but like anything else that really complements each other. And, and we, you know, we discussed it a lot, you know, knowing that, uh, uh, you know, coming together, we'd be able to create a bigger, better opportunity and it's it's funny. I think he always always kind of envied me in what I was doing, and I always kind of envied him in what he was doing. <laughs> and and when we brought it all together, we just you know kind of combined our core competencies, and it really created a winning combination. That's really cool. You've through the years worked with companies like GoPro, Juiceman, of course, which you just mentioned, Sonicare. George Foreman Grills, OxyClean, Rug Doctor, Chick Fil A, Atlanta Falcons and Hawkins, Auto Trader, Seattle Mar Mariners and Seahawks. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of people that <laughs> you've, you've businesses you've either started or you've worked with or consulted with. As you've gone through that, y you have this vast knowledge of wisdom. What's the continuity thread between all of them where you can kind of step back and say, you know, whether it's a small business or big business, this is something that you really need to, to hone in and focus on when you, you're doing your business. Yeah. Well, we, we've been helping develop world-class people and world-class brands for over 30 years. And, 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 and it's my, my belief that but before you can become a world-class brand, you have to become a world-class person. Uh, we always try to go in and help people to be the best version of themselves. And, 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 and most of that is involved around, you know, having clarity, really yeah. having a clear picture of where they are, where they want to go. And, and just from having done this for so many years, there's a lot of lost people out there. Right. There's a lot of people that, uh, you know, have an idea uh, or a concept. And, and, and people ask me all the time, what's the difference between the people that, you know, go on and do something about their ideas and the people that don't? And I said, well, it's a pretty simple concept. The people, the people that do, do, and the people that don't, don't. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and, and it really is. Everybody has that idea. I think everybody has that passion or dream of being an actor, being an entrepreneur, being, uh, you know, an athlete, whatever it is they want to be. But either, uh, you know, they just uh, put themselves in a position where they're making money, they need to pay the rent. And they're afraid to step out of their comfort zone and go for it. And 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 literally for me, you know, I knew I was going to have to be an entrepreneur because I got fired from my first three jobs. So it was pretty easy for me <laughs> to go out there and make that happen. But you know, I think the common thread, uh, you know, between all the people and the businesses, especially the real successful ones, is 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 that number one, you know, when we meet those companies, typically they're 
uh, doing a million dollars or less in business, they have a great uh, vision. Uh, they have great people uh, that started the business. They have a great product that uh, you know kind of disrupted the status quo of yeah. that category. You know that we launched, whether it was the George Foreman Grill, which was one of the first double-sided grills. Uh, you know, juicing. We were we were educating people about juicing. You know, th- 25 years ago, before anybody knew what juicing was, and and I think through the whole process. Uh, we were never selling people products. We were educating people uh, just specifically about the juicer, uh, about good health and proper nutrition, and then providing them with quality programs to live the healthiest lifestyle possible. So uh, again, good products that had a unique selling proposition, good people that were coachable. Uh, you know, I, I, I have this saying that I know what I know, but more importantly, I know what I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, most of my success in life, Michael has come by surrounding myself with people a lot smarter than me. So I don't know everything. And when I don't know it, I go out and find people that are the best in that niche or category and bring them in to help. And, and, and like anything else, I think you have to be a constant student. Uh, be a continual learner. If you want to earn more, you have to learn more. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm sick. You know, I'm 63 years old. Uh, my wife and I have a pact. We refuse to let old people move into our bodies. So <laughs> you know, we're working out mentally, physically, spiritually every day. You know, to really keep in shape and and stay on top of our game to be the best that we can be. And and typically, what I've found when people take care of themselves mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually it really creates a much better opportunity for them to succeed in business. Well, and, and I think that that raises a good point of of starting with you and understanding who you are and your strengths and your weaknesses, your identity of, of the things that make you you is the foundation of anything else that you're going to do, whether that's starting a business, whether that's being a, a person in a, a you know captive agent employee kind of place. Starting with that place really sets a foundation for everything else, and it sounds like that's really what you're saying is is get to know yourself and be honest with that and get yourself in check because when you're healthy, then everything else can fall into place. Yeah, and 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 again, it's 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 you know it takes people I think time to figure out who they are, how they're wired, what their purpose and passion is in life, and and again, a lot of what I do is helping people to kind of unlock that uh, that that potential uh, and really find out who they are and 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 to me it, it's like so you know so often I had lots of friends you know kind of coming up through the ranks that were successful business people professional athletes and I was like oh if I could only be like him or if I could be like that or gosh I wish my relationships were like and 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 then I finally realized that you know everything I've experienced in life has prepared me for what I'm about to do right and my goal and role is to be the best version of me and you use the gifts and talents that God gave me uh, to go out there and influence and impact the world in a way that only I can do that. And I think so often people look at other uh, people and want, you know, to get, they see the outcome of all of the time, effort, and energy that people have put into it uh, and want to, you know, just snap their fingers and think that that's going to, you know, happen overnight. And, and uh, you know, I'm a success today, but it's been built up over 30 years of going through ups and downs, successes and failures. And again, that word failure, I don't really believe it. It's not a failure. Uh, you know, when you fall down, uh, failure is not getting back up. If you fall down, it's all about getting back up and, and pers- uh, pursuing with whatever you're passionate about with persistence. You know, and I hear a lot of talk today about people saying, well, you know, passion isn't really important in doing what you do. And I would just poo poo that, you know, I, I, you know, if you're not passionate about what you do, how can you expect anybody else to do it? Yeah. And I see so many people you know, that, that are making, they're, they're making good money, but they don't enjoy doing what they're doing. And statistics show that over 84% of the population aren't excited about doing what they do for a living. And I can't understand how people can continue to do something that they really aren't passionate about or don't really enjoy doing. Yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah, I really think you have to connect those dots to uh, really be the best version of you and live life to the fullest. Well, and speaking of the best version of you, you're in a new season of of 
doing things differently than what you've done in the last several years. You've you've written a new book. You are starting a new business. Tell us a little bit about that new journey. Well, it, it's pretty incredible. I, actually, the book uh, the book is something that I've had uh, you know in my head. Somebody asked me how long did it take you to write it, and I said twenty five years. <laughs> I, I mean, literally, I, I had quotes. I had uh, the idea. I knew I always wanted to write a book. Uh, but again, as I tell people from a goal perspective, you know, uh, what you want to do is not nearly as important as why you want to do it. Right. And if your why isn't big enough, your what won't matter. So I knew I wanted to write the book, but I never had that compelling reason. And then over the years, as I had kids and I wanted to leave a legacy and I wanted to, uh, again, help people and leverage it beyond just the people that I could work with one on one. You know, I created that compelling reason why I needed to write this book. And then with the encouragement of my family and a lot of other close friends, uh, I took that plunge. And literally when I pulled the trigger and said go uh, from start to finish six months later, I was holding my book in my hand. Uh, and, and, and a week after my book was published, I was speaking in front of 3000 people. Wow. And, and, and a book just does amazing things. Uh, Michael, we we actually when we work with clients, encourage them to write a book to help them become the expert in their industry. And 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 a lot of times, uh, you know, just becoming an author puts you in the top half percent of, of the, the people in the country. Uh, but then having a book just, uh, again, separates you from everybody else out there and gives you a competitive advantage. And to me, that's what we always look look for, whether it's uh, building a business or building a person. You know, what is your competitive advantage? How can you uh, leverage your skill sets and and separate yourself from the crowd because there is so much noise out there in the world. There's so much going on in the media and it's so hard to really have a voice that's different than everything else that's out there. Yeah. And I think that's that's the, one of the most important parts is, you know, just like we do with the products we work with is really looking for that unique brand voice. I think it's the same thing with people to in, individually believe and have confidence in who they are and what their brand voice is. You know, the brand called you. How do you market yourself that's going to present yourself that's uniquely different than what everybody else is doing in your industry or in the the niche that you're working with? Well, let's talk about your book specifically. It's called Clarity, How to Get It, How to Keep It, How to Use It to Bounce Your Life. So there's a lot in that. Uh, yep. tell us the premise of the book and, and when you say how to get it, how to keep it, and especially that bounce your life part, what does that mean? I have seen over the course of the, my, my 35 plus years in business, a, a, you know, a lot of people that were successful, but left the trail of broken relationships in the yeah. process. And, and to me, all the success, uh, you know, uh, at work cannot compensate uh, for failure at home. And don't get me wrong. I know stuff happens. I know the divorce rate is 50%. Um, but I really try to work with people to help them balance both sides of the equation, you know, to build the business and not do it at the expense of, of the relationships uh, and, and really be intentional about what you do on a day in and day out basis. Again, it's all about working smart, on both sides of the equation. And I, you know, there's times when your life have to be out of balance. When you start a company, uh, I'm traveling, <laughs> I, you know, in the next two weeks, I have to be in Seattle, Chicago, Philadelphia, Las Vegas. So, you know, I'm on the road. Uh, and, and, and by the way, I'm a new grandfather. I just had my oh, first congratulations two days ago, but in between, in between those trips. Okay. I totally didn't have the time but I made the time. I drove from Florida up to Atlanta to catch a flight to fly back down to Tampa to go hug my first grandbaby and then got a flight back up to Atlanta the day before yesterday to fly out to Los Angeles. Wow. So to me, when you have predetermined what's important in your life, it's a lot easier. And again, when you have clarity on what that looks like on a personal and professional level, it makes it a lot easier to know what to do today, tomorrow, next week, and next month, what to say yes to and what to say no to. Yeah. Uh, 
So, you know, that, that's, that, that's what came up. And I struggled with clarity for so long in my life, you know, with my dad having passed away, uh, you know, I was kind of, uh, let's just say I have a chapter in there that talks about the sex, drugs, rock and roll era of my life, wow. you know, that I kind of ran away from my issues rather than dealing with them. And it wasn't until I really, uh, uh focused on, uh, realizing that, uh, I had two ways to react to life as it happened to me. And I could either get bitter or get better and, and literally made that choice to use the things that happened to me in the past to be a springboard to help other people. And, and, and so, you know, that's kind of where the passion came from. And, and the book talks about, you know, having how to develop that clarity, how to do it on a personal level and a business level. I've been blessed with uh, great uh, friends and colleagues like, uh, you know, Hall of Famer Dan Reeves, the coach and NFL player, uh, to write some nice testimonials about it. Business people, coaches, people that I've had the uh, uh, opportunity to influence and impact. Uh, and, and again, this isn't a magic silver bullet fix. Right, right. I, I can kind of give you the roadmap, but you have to get in your car and go on your own personal journey to achieve it. These are just the tools in the toolbox to help you get there. You also are starting uh, Cesare Ignite. What is that? Well, uh, over the course of the years, uh, we uh, for every company uh, like GoPro or Sonicare, uh, Juice Man, uh, George Foreman Grill that we said yes to, there were probably 50 that we said no to because wow. they were too small uh, and couldn't, uh, you know, they needed to get to the next level. They had potential. So Cesare Ignite is really out there to help ignite uh, people on their individual success and to ignite the growth of their business. And we really have kind of three buckets that we deal with. Uh, number one is you got to have a, set, a, a really sound foundation to grow any business. Yeah. And so kind of come in and do what's called a destination planning session. That's what I just did out in Los Angeles with a company, you know, that looks at where you are, where you aspire to be three years down the road, and then takes a look at what your core competencies are, takes a look at what your value proposition is, looks at who your market is, what are your demographics, what is the message that resonates with those folks, and really kind of lifts the hood and, and, and looks at the engine to really see what makes that business run. Then when we understand it, we move it to phase two and help them develop a go-to-market strategy uh, or a scalable solution. Uh, and, and, and that can include anything from uh, going on a shopping channel, uh, introduction to our retail partners, uh, uh, public relations, digital marketing, social media. Uh, I, I like to tell people, we talked a little bit about this before, you know, we were Shark Tank before Shark Tank. Yeah. You know, we worked with companies helping them to, you know, take an unknown brand or product and create a, a national brand out of it. And, and, and so, you know, we're real excited about doing that. And then once you have phase one, phase two, proven strategies, create the foundation. Number two, come up with the scalable solutions and the go-to-market strategy. Then phase three is we come in and pour the gas on the fire and accelerate the growth of the business. And, and, and again, we have uh, dozens of case studies taking companies from a million dollars in revenue and in two to three years, uh, having them do between 100 and 200 million in revenue. And again, this is not a magic bullet. This, this is a, a really disciplined focus of working with the entrepreneur and his team or her team uh, to really create clarity on what it is they want to accomplish uh, and then come back and work with them uh, on things such like uh, one of my favorite things is high payback activities. Okay. Uh, high payback activity is something I talk about in my book. Uh, is 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 the things that you do on a day in and day out basis that create the results that you get compensated for or the things that you do on a day in and day out basis that move you closer to the vision or mission of your company. And so when you get people to really focus on the things that move the needle and then you have them delegate what we call the low payback activities to people that uh, love to do it, and, and, and Michael, here's a deal for everything you and I hate to do. There's somebody out there that loves to do it. Yeah. And it goes back to that same thing, knowing what your core competency is, yeah. knowing what you're passionate about, and then delegating and surrounding yourself with other people that let you focus on your core competency. So that's what we do with these businesses. And then again, it's not magic, but when we get people that listen to us, 
Uh, and again, we typically work with people that we feel have the ability uh, and product or service to grow and create an impact. Uh, you know, we have a 70 percent success rate working with people like that, meaning that we take them from where they are to where they want to go in three years, which is, uh, again, one of the highest numbers in our industry. Yeah. Well, one of the things that stood out to me as you, you were sharing there was the significance of being intentional. I think there's this perception in society right now, the instant gratification, the instant success, the the garage startup that, you know, two days later, they're, they're making billions of dollars, you know, <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and, you know, that's just not the reality. And so many people are drifting saying, well, I have this idea, it's going to happen. But having that clarity and having that strategy and having that plan that reinforces where you want to go, that that's so significant. You know, you, you've written this book, Clarity. The audience that we reach, how is that book going to help them get that clarity? Well, well, again, you said it before that that word intentional is is probably the most prominent. Uh, and again, for me, I spent most of my life reacting to life as it happened. You know, I talked to you about my dad passing away. Uh, two years later, I had uh, a, 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 a two-year-old, uh, I'm sorry, four-year-old brother that drowned in a lake. And wow. then uh, several years later, uh, I had another brother who was captain of the football team at West Point, uh, was supposed to graduate, have a family reunion up uh, on the banks of the Hudson. Uh, and then driving home from a baseball game, uh, he was killed in an automobile accident. Oh my goodness! And 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 literally, you know, we have this. You know, we all have this junk in our trunk yeah. uh, that we drag with us through life. And as I talked about before, that junk will either dominate and drag us down, or we use it, uh, deal with it, uh, and 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 learn how to help other people through some of the same things we came through. And, and so I spent most of my life uh, running away from that pain that I grew up with. And, and so, you know, clarity and being intentional will help you go from where you are to where you want to be. And, and I tell people that come up to me, you know, with ideas about products or what they want to do or what they aspire to do. I just met a young man at a Bible study this morning who was in a severe automobile accident and was in six and a half years of rehab. Wow. And I told him, I said, my gosh, you have one of the most incredible voices I've ever heard. He goes, well, funny you should say that. I'm really looking to be a sportscaster and do voiceover and, and literally I'm helping him make the introductions, you know, to do it. And, and, and again, it, you know, that old cliche, it's not what happens to us in life. It's how we respond to it. Yeah. And we either respond by saying, I'm a victim. I can't do anything. It's my somebody else's fault. We can blame politics. We can blame <laughs> yeah. Washington. We can blame the liberals. We can blame the conservatives. The bottom line is the only person you can blame is yourself. You're either going to move forward and take advantage of the opportunities that are out there. And, and I'm just telling you today, if I can do it, I always like to laugh. I said, at me, a, a strong C minus student, if I can, <laughs> anybody else out there can do it. And I've been in those low places where uh, I didn't believe in myself. I, you know, didn't know how I was going to make my rent check. Uh, you know, I, I, we all struggle with different things, financial, relational, uh, emotional, whatever it is. But you have two choices. You can let that overcome uh, and, 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 and dictate who you are, or you can put a stake in the ground and say, I'm not going to let this dominate my life. And I'm going to work to be a, the best version of me and use these experiences that I've gone through, you know, to help be a positive influence and make a positive impact in the world. And when I say in the world, that could be in your neighborhood, that could be with your, you know, one person, it could be with 10 people, Again, I've been blessed to be able to, you know, stand in front of thousands of people and share this information and really help people individually and professionally be the best version that they can be. So, you know, again, I the feedback that I get from the book is that uh, uh, people go through and circle and underline and come back and look at the different principles I teach in the book, uh, and 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 you know, it has a five star rating on Amazon. Uh, and and has really helped them to take their life to the next level, and 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 it works with uh, you know you you talked about the different sized businesses, 
I'm working with a, one company that's doing a couple million dollars in business, and I'm working with another company that 13 years ago started and now is a $1.2 billion company. Wow. And I'm working with their CEOs, and it's the same principles and the same struggles that you know the businesses have and the principles work no matter whether you're a you know a, a sole entrepreneur or whether you're the head of a multi-billion dollar company. These are time-tested principles that really help you uh, move from where you are to where you want to be. And 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 again, it's 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 about setting goals. It's about having clarity, uh, and and then it's about taking action on those goals. It's about creating compelling reasons on why must I succeed? Why is this so important? Who is going to be impacted? Uh, you know, if I'm successful, how how is that going to impact the people in my world? How will that impact my wife, my kids, and their kids? Uh, and so I'm always looking at. Uh, you know, how can I be more of a positive impact on the people that I connect with on a day in and day out basis, starting at home, then moving to my business, then moving into the greater community? Yeah, I think that's really, really good. Now, there is a rumor floating out uh, uh -oh. that there may be a sequel to your book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I know I have a couple more books in me. Uh, you know, it's funny. Have you ever heard of the principle, eat the frog? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was coined by Brian Tracy. And basically, uh, eat the frog, uh, you know, refers to uh, that thing that you hate to do, uh, that, that you know if you did it, that you'd be better off for it and everybody around you would be better off for it. And the concept of eat the frog is that if you eat the frog first thing in the morning, everything you eat after that will taste pretty good. Well, when it came to writing my book, you know what my frog was? What's that? Writing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I literally just got paralysis by analysis when I thought about sitting down and writing a book. Remember, I'm a strong C minus student. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, what, what I found out was that there are always alternatives and different ways to do things. And I actually found this program called Talk Your Book. Okay. Where I could talk, they would uh, record it, they would transcribe it. Again, my voice, my stories, but I didn't have to sit down and write, you know, and, and worry about punctuation in English. Again, it's focusing on your core competency and delegating the things you can't do to other people that are good at doing that. So I, I, there's always a way to find an alternative for the things you don't like to do. And writing my book was one of those things. And, and yes, I have at least two or three other books in me. I'm in the process of uh, uh, Rick and I are penciling an outline for our next book uh, that we're going to, well, our first book that we're going to do together. And it's kind of ironic over the course of the companies we've worked with, uh, we've had four of the people we work with become uh, New York Times bestselling authors. Uh, and, and literally it's because of the marketing that we did, uh, and, and th their books were good, but, but again, the, the, the people that make it really big is because of the marketing. So when we did the juicing business, we had the, uh, juicing for life written by Sherry Kelbaum yeah. has sold over 3 million copies to date. Uh, the juice man's juicing for life, uh, was number 10 on the New York times nonfiction back in the day. And again, every client we work with, I always encourage them to write a book to help differentiate them in the marketplace, but then also it becomes a great opportunity to leverage it for public relations, uh, for digital marketing, for a, a lot of different reasons. It's a really great opportunity. That's really, really cool. You mentioned in an interview that I saw that writing the book has also opened up the door to increasing your speaking, the, the, different uh, engagements that you're speaking at and, and kind of that authority that you have. I mean, you've done so much before that. So it's just crazy that, that the book's been able to open that door even further for you. Yeah. Uh, well, we started a mastermind group. Uh, and again, a mastermind group is a group of uh, CEOs and entrepreneurs that come together and, and the collective wisdom of the group is greater than you know, anybody individually there. Uh, it's a great concept, highly encourage people to do it. Uh, we're actually in the process of starting a Cesare Ignite mastermind group by yeah. invitation and application only. Uh, but in this group, we had a CEO of, of a $600 million business. 
uh, which was underfunded and really just you know sucking his energy. Uh, and literally through the feedback of the group and through the connections of the group, he got the opportunity to uh, uh, apply for the CEO position of a company called Host International, which is a three billion dollar global business wow. uh, based in Italy. And long story short, he became the CEO. He got the job. And, and it just so happened that that company owned all the bookstores in the airports in the country <laughs> called Simply Books. Yeah. So I had been trying for three and a half years to get my book in there. Now I had the CEO of the company. I called him up. He made one phone call. My book ends up in 50 bookstores in airports and literally... Uh, I would say in the next 30 days, I had more people contact me wanting me to do speaking engagements, wanting me to uh, work with them personally or professionally. And it's just amazing when you get uh, your book and you get it out in, 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 in the different places, whether it's self-published or, or whether you go to a traditional publisher, uh, it just really opens up doors that you couldn't get in. Uh, and instead of handing somebody a business card, I'll just give you an example. I was just sitting on a plane flying out to uh, L.A., uh, and, and this uh, young man sat in the, uh, the seat next to me, and he had a, uh, a bandage on his foot. And I said, what would you do? He says, oh, I broke my foot. I said, how would you break it? He says, playing basketball. I said, well, you look like you probably play it uh, uh, at an organized level. He goes, yeah, yeah I I'm a starting guard for Duke. Wow. And, and, and he's getting ready to... Uh, go into the NBA. Uh, and, and he was talking to me, asking me about what I did. And I had one of my books with me. I handed it to him. And on the ride out to LA, he read it. And his father came up to me afterwards. He goes, I, I don't know what you did to my son, but you just rocked his world. Wow. Okay. I'm just sitting here and have, you know, the, the, the young man said, and, and I don't want to share his name because I want to, you know, respect his anonymity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the young young man said to me, he says, this, 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 this was like meant to happen. I said, yeah, I call them divine appointments. It happens all the time. It, it just is amazing. He says, do you mind if I reach out to you and ask you questions along the way? And I said, I'd be happy to help you any way I can. So it's amazing how that happens. And, you know, again, I like to hand books out randomly like that. Or if somebody does something nice for me, I'll sign a book and give it to them. And, and it really just opens up doors and helps people hold you in a different light, whether you have a past, you know, really good reputation uh, or, or, you know, again, I've had lots of success. But the book at whatever level you're at really can help uh, continue to open those doors up. Absolutely. You I was mentioning that you're, you're doing a lot of speaking. You were talking about that you're going to be all over the country, Chicago. You're, you just came back from L.A. You were in Florida. I mean, you're just all over the place. You have a kind of a cool event coming up where you're speaking at um, this event, and uh, Marcus from The Prophet's going to be speaking there too. Tell us a little bit about that event and and – yeah. Well, 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 again, this is this is this is part of, uh, you know, the networking. Uh, you know, I, I, I forget who coined the phrase, but I said, you know, you don't get what you want in life. You get what you negotiate. Yeah. Uh, we, we heard this event was going on. I called up the folks that were putting it on. I told them who I was. I sent them a copy of my book uh, and, and they were like, oh, my gosh, this is great. We have this book already, but would love to you know, bring you guys on board and have you speak. And this was literally uh, three weeks ago, and and now the red carpet business marketing event where Marcus uh, Leon Lemonis is the keynote speaker, aka the Prophet on CNBC. Yeah, uh, we're going to be there with 500 entrepreneurs and business uh, leaders uh, from all over the country, uh, being able to present, uh, you know, our wisdom, our experiences. Uh, and again, speaking is something I'm passionate about doing, but speaking is also part of our business development. When we speak, people hear uh, about what we've done, what we've accomplished, uh, and want to buy our books, want to buy our products, and, and want to get coaching or consulting from us. So uh, I, I, again, it's one of those things where when you can really hone in on what you're passionate about uh, and, and share it with other people – uh, it really creates opportunities to generate the passive income uh, uh, and, 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 and create, uh, again, the life of your dreams. So 
we're excited to participate uh, in that event. Uh, and, and, and again, the reason we're able to do that is because we have a past history of adding value to people and to businesses. And, and literally, I, I think that's what I try to teach people all the time. You know, why should I do business with you? Why should I buy your product? What is uniquely different about you or your product that's going to add value to my life or my business that's different from what everybody else is offering out there? And, and, and really try to get people to think outside the box. And, and, and again, not, not, to, not to try to be somebody else, but to be and leverage their skill sets, their talents, their gifts, their abilities uh, in a way that's commensurate with uh, creating the results that they're trying to create. And, and again, a lot of that comes down to that clarity and, and, and uh, you know, just really having uh, clearly defined, written, measurable goals uh, gives you a, a tool that literally statistics have shown that you will outperform the rest of your peers. You know, I, I, I don't know if you've heard of the study they did at Harvard and Yale uh, in the graduating class in 1954, no. uh, they asked the same thing, how many people had goals, uh, and, and literally less than 3% had goals. Only 1% had clearly defined written measurable goals uh, in every area of their life. They came back 20 years later, uh, and long story short, that 1% outperformed the other 99% combined, wow. uh, not just financially, but relationally as well. Um, and I don't know if it was on my resume, but I, I, I was partners with uh, New York Times bestselling author Tommy Newberry, uh, who started the One Percent Club back in uh, 1996. And literally, uh, when we work with clients in a 12 to 18 month period, we would get them to double their income and double their time off, not through magic, but again, by helping them work on their high payback activities by helping them to define uh, what to say yes to and what to say no to by helping them remove the clutter in their life. And when I talk about clutter, I have a whole chapter in my book. We, you know, we talk about physical clutter, legal clutter, emotional clutter, financial clutter, all those things that really just kind of uh, can get us sucked into the vortex of worrying about uh, how we're going to get out of this situation or how am I going to deal with this legal issue, you know, versus being proactive and removing the mental junk, the physical junk that's stopping us from being the person that we want to be. And, yeah. and I, I shared a little bit before I had so much mental junk that I was dragging through life because of the challenges I had growing up and the deaths and, you know, all of the things that happened to me. It took me a while to be able to deal with that. When I say deal with that, uh, you know, I talk about uh, going to a dear friend of mine who happened to charge me one hundred and seventy five dollars an hour uh, mm -hmm. to help me kind of unpack some of that stuff. Yeah. And, and he, you know, he, what he said to me was so profound. He said, Steve, he handed me this little key. I still have it on my keychain. It's a little skeleton key. Wow. And he said, Steve, the key is 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 to keep your 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 demons locked in the basement so they don't take over the whole house. Yeah. And 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 don't get me wrong, sometimes you have to, you know, I'm not talking about not dealing with your issues, but I'm talking about the, not letting them overwhelm your life. Right. And really, you know, dealing with them yourself or getting professional help uh, to get those taken care of. And and I tell you, it was like somebody like unlocked the chains from me when that happened, wow. and 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 I could clear my mental uh, capacity to do positive things rather than worrying about what people thought about me or worrying about the past or worrying about finances and really taking intentional actions on a day in and day out basis to move closer to the person that I wanted to become. You've mentioned throughout the episode the importance of faith in your life. How is that a foundation for for success in in what you're doing? Well, you know, I always uh, I always begin and end, you know, with that the most important things in life are the things that money can't buy: your faith, your family, and your friends. Yeah. Uh, and when I say friends, I'm talking about the friends you can count on one hand that know everything there is to know about you, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and they're still there to love on you and encourage you. And I give you an example: I have uh, two dear friends. And I talk about this in the book. My mom passed away several years ago, and I'm standing in the Atlanta airport in line, totally devastated. Uh, and I look over, 
and my two buds are in line. And I said, what are you guys doing here? They said, we got your back. <laughs> they came down to the wow. funeral. You know, they didn't have to say anything. I mean, I mean I'm well enough with tears right now. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I just celebrated my 63rd birthday. Uh, my son set up a surprise party. These two guys were there. Uh, this one, this one man, uh, uh, is going to turning 60 next month. I'm going down, uh, to celebrate with him in Florida. We might not see each other for a year, but we just pick up right where we were. You know, when my time is done here on earth, you know, these two guys are going to be holding my ashes or my casket, whichever way I go out. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and again, because of my faith, I know I'm going to see them again, uh, in another place and another time. So, you know, with all the things going on in the world today, I don't know how people get through it without faith, yeah. you know, with, with all of the financial things, with all of the violent things going on. And, and, and to me, you know, no matter what your religion, you know, with, 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 with what I'm talking about, the two greatest tenets of our religion is love God and love others. And if people just love other people and have compassion and, and put themselves in their shoes, whether they're white, black, Hispanic, Iranian, uh, whatever it is. And, 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 and again, I am trying to be more intentional yeah. with reaching out across racial barriers because it's not going to happen because the government mandates it. It's going to happen because people like you and me show love and compassion uh, and, and reach out and are intentional. There's that word again, intentional about taking steps to make a difference right where we are, right where you are, right in your world with the people you can influence and right where I am in my world with the people I can influence. So I'm really passionate about that as well. And uh, uh, it's really been a, 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 a focal point of my life that has helped me through the good times and the bad times. And and again, the, 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 the friends and, and my wife and my kids have just been a tremendous support system and all have a real strong faith as well. I think that's such a valuable uh, thing that people need to understand, that faith is significant, and uh, I really appreciate you sharing that part of your story. It, it, I think it's important, and more people need to talk about it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why you would but it just seems to be uh, <laughs> you know, a topic that either people feel, well, what are people going to think? What are people going to say? And, and, and you know, I've been on a board of lots of, of ministries. One of them was called Pro Athletes Outreach. Uh, and their their mission statement was to equip and encourage pros and their families to be a positive impact for Jesus Christ at home, at work, and in the community. Yeah. And we used to teach these guys, uh, you know, it seems when somebody became a pro athlete, they either found religion or they found sex, drugs, rock and roll. Yeah. And, and these guys were such an incredible role model. And we taught them, hey, people gravitate to you because of what you do, but what a great opportunity for them to find out who you really are. And, and I think, again, I equate it to pro athletes because success in business is the same way. People want to gravitate to you because of who you are and what you've accomplished. But what a great opportunity for them to find out who you really are and how you're wired and what's really important in life. And and to me, you know, somebody asked me, what's one of the greatest accomplishments I've ever done? And, you know, I've been on the cover of Inc. magazine. I've been an Inc. nominated entrepreneur of the year, you know, started multiple companies. And as I thought about it, I said, you know, I started this group called Iron Men based off of Proverbs 27, 17 as iron sharpens iron. So one man will sharpen another. Yeah. Uh, and, and I started it over 25 years ago. And we have 150 guys that show up every Tuesday morning to come and learn uh, that, number one, you're not the only person that thought it, did it or struggled. <laughs> it. Yeah. You know, we're all we're all in this thing together. And number one, number two, that. Hey, look, there's hope for you because I got through it. Bob got through it. John got through it. And, and I can't tell you how many wives come up to me and tell me the changes that they see in their husbands because their husbands become better, better dads to become better husbands because they're, they start to follow biblical principles. They start to get mentored by other men. Uh, and their faith is the foundation that allows all that to happen. So uh, yeah, I, I just would, again, encourage anybody and everybody that's listening, wherever you are, uh, you know, get around people that are going to lift you up. You know, yeah. the people in our lives do one of two things. They either lift us up and move us closer to the people we're trying to become, or they pull us down and away from the people that we want to become. And there's no neutral ground. And again, this word intentional, we need to be intentional with the people we surround ourselves with personally, professionally, 
Uh, and, and, you know, we tell it as parents to our kids. I don't want you hanging out with Johnny or, or Bobby. But how often as parents do we use that same thought process? You know, are the parents we're hanging around with creating a good example for, for our kids and for us? Are they helping move us in a direction? Are they helping us strengthen our marriage? So, yeah, I, I totally agree that it just feels like everybody's waiting for polit politicians to solve all our problems yeah. when the only way it's going to be solved is when you and I put a stake in the ground and just change it, starting with ourselves and the people that we're surrounded with. Yeah. Yeah. I, a good friend of mine once said, you can't legislate morality and you can't legislate compassion. Those are two things that have to come from the heart. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, uh, if if our world would just you know reach out and do more more of that, uh, and again just one person at a time, yeah. uh, you know I love this pay it forward when you're in a Starbucks paying for somebody behind you're at a toll booth paying for somebody. Uh, although I got in trouble once because I, I I went to a toll booth uh, here in Atlanta and uh, you know said pay for the car behind me and it turned out it was a Porsche with a beautiful blonde in it and and she came pulling up next to and I'm sitting in our suburban with my wife and four kids. And she's smiling and waving, and my wife going, "Who's that?" I said, "I think I just paid for her toll. I don't know who she is. I promise." So <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. So. Before we dive into the rapid fire questions, I, I think that what you're saying about faith, family, and friends really is a marker of success. When you look back over your life, what are the things that you cherish most? Yeah. Well, well I, I, again, the as I just look at it, every business I've been involved in, it's either I've been involved in about 17 different companies. Half of them have failed. Uh, the rest of them that were successful have either been acquired or, or aren't here. But the thing that I had when I started the businesses and the things that I still have now are, are those three things, my faith, my family and my friends. And and and, and I really think that that's the most significant thing is that we all get caught up in chasing the entrepreneurial dream. You know, we want uh, the big house, the big car. Uh, I, I, I used to have a $3 million house and I was debt free. Uh, I, I used to have that lifestyle. And, 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 and again, it wasn't that it was in, important to me, but it seemed that it was like part of the trappings of being successful. I, I now live in a two bedroom condo. We split time between here and Florida. Uh, and, and, you know, we're going to build a, a, a 3000 square foot house down in Florida, but those things don't define who I am anymore. Yeah. And, and I've had a lot of high highs, a lot of successes, and I've had a lot of low lows. I've made a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money, but when it's all said and done, it still comes back to those three things, the people that you have in your life, your faith, your family, and, and, and those friends that you can count on one hand. Uh, to me are the most significant and important things in my life. And then secondly, is just giving back, you know, having the compassion with whatever level of success you've been blessed with. You know, we have this saying that your success blesses others. Yeah, I love working and picking specifically young entrepreneurs that have a heart to help. I have a young 32 year old entrepreneur who's done real well. I just finished doing a destination planning session with him. Uh, this young man, sold some businesses for several million dollars and he's giving half of it away. Wow. And he says, he said, Steve, I need help because I can't give it away fast enough. Would you help <laughs> me discern? Uh, Cause I want to really do this the right way. Yeah. And so, you know, we help develop a plan. I mean, who, how many people at 32 years old think that way? So I will find myself pouring into people like that. Uh, uh, and, and, and finding ways to serve that leverage the skill set to take it beyond just impacting one person, but to impact uh, a multitude of people. And, and that's where I spend a lot of my time. My son, and a, 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 who's 30 years old and successful, and so, uh, three or four of his colleagues just started a ministry called Purpose on Tap, specifically oh, cool. for 25, 25 to 35 year olds. They meet at a place called Monday Night Brewery. You know, they give them a ticket for a couple of beers. I was their first speaker. They had 110 young men, 25 to 35, come here from somebody like me about what's important in life and what, you know, how can you uh, take the wisdom that I have and the other people who share and use it to mold your life into being compassionate and helping and serving. 
and who, you know, when, when, it, when they were 25 or 30 years old, even thought about that. I wasn't thinking about being compassionate when I was 25 yeah. or 30. So to me, that is what is most rewarding. And don't get me wrong. I like the business. I like being successful and helping people to succeed. But there's got to be a greater sense of purpose than just making money. And, and so, again, that alludes back to my book, The Balance, Giving, Not Just Getting, uh, you know, I think there's two types of people uh, my wife has figured out, givers and takers, and, and really try to work with givers. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, I always ask myself two questions when I do something to check my motives. You know, am I trying to look good or am I trying to do good? Yeah. And I think it's a good barometer, you know, when you're doing something, whether it's personally, professionally, you know, financially or uh, the, you know, from a ministerial standpoint, you know, am I trying to look good or am I trying to do good? Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, again, just try to encourage the givers in your life, uh, to keep giving and create opportunities to make that happen. And, uh, you know, that's where I really am fired up about spending my time. The business is just a vehicle that allows some of that to happen, yeah. but it's people into giving back that I'm really fired up about. That's so good. There's so much we could talk about. I mean, you are a well of just rich wisdom, and and I've appreciated the time that you've shared uh, on the podcast. I have a couple rapid fire questions that I sure. end every episode with. Uh, but first, I want to just thank you for for sharing the depth of wisdom that you have with our listeners. That's so significant. Well, well, it's been uh, uh, my pleasure and honor, and love to have the opportunity to come back and do it some more if it uh, makes to do that. Yeah, let's do it. So let's do some rapid fire questions. The first question I have is geared towards our audience specifically, and that's what's one step someone can take to start chasing their dream or idea? Yeah, I, I always ask people one of the first questions is, you know, what are you chasing that you should be attracting? You know, so many people, you know, you know just try to make something happen before they dealt with themselves. And I, I, I would say just really sit down uh, get a piece of paper out and and write down what it is you want to do. And then right after that, write a paragraph. Why must you succeed at doing that? Because if you don't have a compelling reason why you need to succeed, what you want to do probably will fizzle out the first challenge you hit or the first time somebody, you know, says, you know, what do you, why would you want to do that? I remember when I walked into a bank and said, you know, my brother and I have an idea. We have this machine that we're going to put carrots and celery in and it's <laughs> going to make juice. Will you loan me $50,000? How many banks do you think turned me down? Oh, probably a lot. <laughs> 25. Wow. Okay. And so I finally had to go out and mortgage our home uh, to start the company because I believed in it that much. And, and, and so, you know, that's the other thing I tell people is, you know, I get people that come to me. We probably see 40 or 50 deals a month. And they're like, oh, you know, I want you to invest in my company. Well, how much have you invested? Well, I haven't invested anything. I, I said, well, if you're not willing to invest in your company, why, why should I be willing to invest in your yeah. company? And, and investing is not what I do. But again, it's really, to me, uh, sit down, write your idea down on a piece of paper, and then come up with a compelling reason. Why must I succeed? What's at stake? Yeah. Who will be blessed? Uh, you know, wh who's going to be impacted if, uh, when I'm busy and don't use if use when mm -hmm. I really like to talk in positive affirmations. And, and I don't mean that in any, you know, metaphysical way. Yeah. I really think, you know, the way we say it, the thoughts you hold in your head become the reality that you hold in your hand. Yeah. You got to think it up here before it happens out here. Every idea, every concept, every business that's been started out there was somebody's idea in the head. Nothing happens till you get it out of your head, write it down on paper, and then take that first step. Take action now. Write it down. Make it happen. And then what is that first step? Is it a phone call? Is it talking to somebody who did it? Is it Googling to see if anybody else is doing? I don't know what it is for you, but write it down, make it happen, come up with a compelling reason why, and then take action. If you don't take action, nothing happens. I love what Harry Truman says. Imperfect action is always better than perfect inaction. Yeah. And, and, and one other one I love, done is better than perfect. Don't worry about how dotting the I's and crossing the T's Go out there. I like to use the term ready, fire, aim. Try something. Try anything. 
If it doesn't work, that just puts you one step closer of knowing what didn't work and one step closer to know, you know, finding out what will work. Yeah. So, you know, that, that would be my answer to that. Sorry. I get fired up about this stuff. This I love is real- it. Passion's significant. I agree with you. So I think it's great. Passion, passion's the backbone of, 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 of motivation, I think. And without that passion, that burning fire, like you're showing right there, it, it just, you know, I don't think it's worth our time. So, well, well, and, and you can't teach passion. It's no. like you either have it or you don't, you yeah. know? And, and I think everybody has something inside them that they can be passionate about. They just haven't found it yet. Yeah. And, and for to sure. me, that, that's, that, that's the secret of life is really, you know, finding what that passion is that will unlock your purpose, you know, so you can be the best version of you, whatever that is. If it's being a janitor at a school, if it's being a, a, a waiter or a waitress at, in, in, in a restaurant, if it's being a nurse, a doctor, whatever it is, just do it to the best of your ability and do it with a smile on your face and with compassion and passion. Absolutely. What's one area in the world you want to see change? Uh, I, I'm on the vision committee at our church here in Atlanta, and Atlanta is the hub for sex trafficking in, in, wow. in, in the country. And, and this is near and dear to me because I've got three daughters, and I just can't fathom how this happens right in our backyard. Our, our men's group called Ironman is going to Guatemala this year uh, to work with a uh, organization that helps take women and transition them out of the sex trafficking. And, and so, you know, that's something that I'm, I'm really passionate about. Uh, and, 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 and to me, it's a form of modern slavery and statistics show that there's anywhere from 20 to 30 million uh, people around the world that are stuck in this, this, this sex trafficking industry. And half of them, half of them are under 12 years old. So and that's just, that's just like that. I, it, 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 I can't sleep at night just thinking about it. Yeah. But again, here's the, here's the thing. It's like, are you part of the problem or are you part of the solution? Doing nothing is being part of the problem. And so I don't know how I can make a difference, but I'm being vocal about it. I'm bringing it up at our church. We are looking at creating and doing an, uh, you know, something here in the city of Atlanta with the you know, politicians. Uh, and then our, our men's group is going to Guatemala to do something hands-on for a group of people in that area that, that you know, hopefully will change their lives. And here's what I found out, Michael, too. When you go and help people in that capacity, you think you're going to serve them. And so often they end up pouring into you with the level of faith they have because they have nothing else. Right. And, and, and it, you just grow as a human being when you give and serve and do things to help other people that are less fortunate than, than we are. And I really truly believe that that's what we've been put here for is, is to help lift up other people, to help encourage other people, to help give people a hand up, not a handout, uh, and, and, and help them be the best version of they, that they can be regardless of where their circumstances are, if it's across the ocean or if it's right here in our backyard. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. You you got a lot of years ahead of you yet, but looking back, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, I, 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 again, I, I, I think I partially answered that early on. Yeah. I, I, I really, um, the, the, the group of men that I work with and the responses I get from their wives and the impact these guys have uh, on their families – uh, I, 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 the legacy I want to leave is a whole nother generation of people that are passionate un, and compassionate uh, about what they're doing and that the people, uh, whose lives, uh, I've influenced are doing the same and in influencing others. And, you know, that people can come back. We were sitting at this event, uh, I just celebrated my 63rd birthday and I think I told you this, my wife and I have this pact that we refuse to let old people move into our bodies. So yeah. we work three to four times a week. Our bodies don't always cooperate, but, you know, <laughs> we do it. But we were sitting at this table and the fella who mentored me spiritually, his name, I'll tell you his name, Brett Butler. He used to play for the Atlanta Braves. Yeah. And, and I'm uh, the godfather to his son and he's the godfather to my son. Uh, and sitting there seeing how he poured into me. And there was another young man there who's 45 years old um, who came to Ironman 10 years ago, kind of kicking and screaming. And I poured into him and now he's a table leader and he's leading other men. And then to see my son, who's 30 years old and the ripple effect 
of pouring into other people is the legacy that just floats my boat and that I really want to see. Uh, and again, if I can accomplish that through helping people become successful businessmen, uh, that's even more the better. So, uh, you know, that's that's uh, that's what's really floating my boat right now and uh, really excited about uh, whatever God wants me to do. And like the way I love to say it is everything we've experienced in life has prepared us for what we're about to do next. Yeah. And so I'm excited to see what uh, that next chapter looks like. Yeah, that's good. Who or what inspires you? <laughs> My wife uh, inspires me. I call her the Ever Ready Bunny. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 on our second date, I said, so uh, what do you want to do with your life? She says, I want four kids before I'm 30. I want to get my master's in four years, and I want to get my doctorate in 10. She <laughs> says, what do you want to do? I, I said, I think I want to marry you. <laughs> And we had four kids when she turned 30. She got her master's in, in five years. Uh, she waited till she was 46 and the kids were grown and out of the house to go back and get her doctorate. Um, I call her the ever ready bunny. She is a doer. She has inspired me to be more, to do more, uh, to be the best version of me. And, and, and it, I, I'm just, you know, we're going on year 36. Wow. And, and I think the best years are still ahead. We're just excited with whatever time we have to, uh, you know, continue to, to impact the world however we can. That's so good. What are you reading or watching right now? Uh, reading, reading a book called uh, Teach and Grow Rich. You're all familiar, you know, you're familiar with Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and again, because we're doing a, a lot of teaching and, and, you know, really learning somebody uh, coined the phrase, you know, tell people what you know versus sell people what you know. And, and it's funny, you know, you get so used to doing what you do and the words that come out of your mouth, you don't realize just the wisdom that's coming out. Uh, and, and so, you know, we're looking at putting together, you know, some business programs for the people that can't see us face to face or, you know, hire us professionally. Uh, and, and so I'm real excited about that. So that book is, is, is really helping in the process. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we do um, a Bible study. I'm actually reading uh, in the book of Proverbs right now. Uh, I always try to keep grounded, you know, in that because uh, that really helps me. Uh, I do a devotional, uh, uh, The Power of a Praying Husband, for my wife every day. You know, statistics show that less than one percent of 1700 couples that pray together, uh, get divorced. So, wow. you know, it's pretty simply couples that pray together, stay together. Yeah. And it's pretty hard to get mad at the person sitting on the floor next to you or kneeling on the floor next to you as you're praying for each other. So that was really difficult for me to do, but like anything else, I love what Aristotle says, you know, that which we learn to do, we learn by the actual doing of it, yeah. you know, whether it's praying, whether it's being an entrepreneur, nothing happens until you step out of your comfort zone and try it and create a habit and make it part of your life. And again, here's that word, be intentional about yeah. it. Yeah. And, and, and so to me, uh, I really try to be one of those people that walk the walk and not just, you know, talk to talk. And so like, you know, if I'm selling a product, I'm using that product. Uh, if I say something in my book, I have people come up to me all the time and and, 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 and say, do you really do 50 pushups a day? And I'm like, holy crap, I got to get down and do 50 pushups today now, you know, cause somebody just asked. <laughs> uh, so, so you gotta, yeah, be careful what you tell people or what you put in a book. Cause people are going to hold you accountable to do it. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You've shared a lot of great wisdom. There are going to be people listening who may want to connect with you. How can they connect with you? Uh, they can reach out, uh, they can reach me at steve.cesari at cesariignite.com, or they can use steve at stevecesari.com. That might be a little easier. Uh, and, and again, I love hearing from other people uh, and and uh, love hearing what other people are up to. And, and, and again, if there's anything I can do to help any of your listeners, would love to would love to hear from them. I always end every episode with this question. What is one dream you're still wanting to fulfill in your own life? Wow. Um, I, I used to do a lot of outdoor activity, uh, climbing Mount Rainier. And uh, as I got older and, you know, body parts weren't working as well, it, it became more difficult. I still enjoy uh, I still enjoy cycling. I do a lot of that. Uh, I haven't done a century ride yet. I plan on doing it this summer. Wow. Uh, 
Uh, my wife and I would love to go and live in Italy. That's where my ancestors from are on my dad's side. We've been there six times. We want to go live there for three months. Um, you know, that's one of the big ones. And then um, I just started working with another uh, uh, organization. And again, this is a great, uh, a great story. Uh, the founder uh, was a 36 year old hedge, hedge fund manager, was riding his bike on the Silver Comet Trail, got stung by a bee was paralyzed from the neck down at yeah. 36. Wow. Uh, he uh, runs a nonprofit now, uh, and that nonprofit uh, is buying businesses um, uh, to help uh, make them profitable so they can fund his nonprofit. Wow. Uh, that's what I'm pouring into, and we think we can create a profit, nonprofit, billion-dollar opportunity I mean, that's a real, real big, uh, you know, dream that we have, he has, and, and, uh, uh, we're looking at the first part of the business to make that happen. Uh, and, and that to me is always something, you know, that I've thought of why can't the struggling ministries come up with a concept to help fund them. And, and now he's come up with a concept. So I'm, I'm working with him. We just started working probably in the last month. Uh, he's an incredible human being you know, uh, paralyzed from the neck down in a wheelchair, uh, but an inspiring speaker, smart businessman, and has one of the biggest hearts for the Lord that I've ever met and just, you know, wants to give back and help others. And so uh, I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of that. And again, when God's hand is in it and we get out of his way uh, and we let him use our gifts and talents, uh, you know, how high is up? It's amazing yeah. the things that can be done. And again, I don't know how it's going to be done, but when you know what you want to do and you have a compelling reason why you want to do it, the how part will work itself out. You'll attract the right people. You'll attract the right resources. But you have got to be the best version of you, whatever you choose to do. Be passionate about it. Be a giver and help other people up through the process. Uh, and the more people you help up, the more they'll help you to get where you want to go as well. So. I really appreciate you having me and, uh, uh, again, excited uh, uh, about sharing with your listeners. And, and thank you so much for creating the format to share this wisdom because uh, uh, people need uh, to hear and get more wisdom on how you know they can be the, uh, a better version of themselves and pursue their dreams and, and do the things that they aspire to do. So thank you for creating that environment and that forum. Well, thanks for, for being on and sharing your story. and. And just the deep rivers of wisdom that you have. Thank you so much. Uh, I know our audience is going to get a lot out of it. Good, 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 good. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks again and uh, take care. God bless to you and, and your audience. Once again, I want to thank my guest today, Steve Cesari, for being on the podcast. It was a privilege to have him on. I look forward to having him back to share more of his story. On Thursday's episode, we have Jelaine D. She is the founder and creative director of Cherry Blooms, really cool company based out of Australia. Can't wait to share her story with you. It's going to be a lot of fun. Don't forget to tune in to Facebook or Instagram and check out this Friday's One Tip Friday, where I give you a tip to help you chase your big idea and dream and create it in the world around you. It's a really simple thing to do and we wanna make sure that you have the tools to chase the dreams that you have. Thanks again for tuning in. I hope you have an incredible week. Now get out there and chase that big idea and dream and make the world you wanna live in. Lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.